All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. This is going to be my review for the first episode of The Last of Us HBO series. Uh, and this episode was titled When You Are Lost in the Darkness, which is half the, uh, you know, the slogan for the Fireflies, of course. Um, so real quick before I get into the review, y'all know this is not something I typically do. You know, I review games and I do impressions of, of games and other things. Uh, but reviewing a whole episode and recapping and summarizing a whole, a whole TV show episode is not really something I've done be before. I don't really have experience in it like that. So give me a little, you know, cut me a little slack. Give me a little grace because I'm trying to figure out like the right balance of like what to mention in the episode, um, all the major things to talk about, but not, you know, mention every little thing that happened in it. So because, you know, it's I want to be very thorough, but I don't want to you know, mention all the pointless things either. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, that that balance. So this video also isn't maybe like 40 minutes long, right? Okay, so also um, every I will be doing this for every episode, but I probably won't be able to upload it Monday morning every single time because the you know, the episode comes out Sunday and then you know that night it's pretty late and I'm busy and other stuff with the podcast so I won't be able to have my video review um, up every single Monday probably Monday night at the latest maybe Tuesday maybe Tuesday morning um, but I'll do my best to have it up as um, soon as possible so I did put up my impressions of this episode already uh, I did that on Saturday because um, some of you may have saw that because I got to see an early screening of this first episode so this is actually this was actually my second time watching this episode and i did it in a watch party with the weapon wheel discord very fun really enjoy that exp that experience so um let's get to the episode so when you're lost in the darkness first episode the last of us hbo series so overall i thought it was a very good episode same thing i said in my um in my in my impressions i thought it was a very good episode uh that you know the um the cinematography uh you know just how everything was was shot it was well produced the production level is really up there um the acting by everybody outs once again outside of bella ramsey as uh as ellie that's the only thing that feels a little bit out of place to me that the only thing that i'm just not convinced by once again that it, it is possible that that may change uh i think her i just think her acting ability isn't uh, up there yet with everybody else uh which could compensate for her uh lack of um her lack of looking actually looking like ellie so you know that's that's the only thing i kind of found um you know a, a little bit jarring a little bit uh distracting of course they made uh some changes and deviations uh to the uh you know to the to the show um, because there there were several parts of the game that essentially were only there for gameplay reasons um, so they had to like streamline that makes make a little shortcuts make some changes so let's see so the episode so the episode starts out with these scientists I think in like maybe what was it 19 the 1950s and they're scientists and they're talking about spores and um, and, and funguses and, and pandemics and things like that um, and this is a good way of like introducing people who are not familiar with The Last of Us, who hasn't haven't played the game, because you, this is really who they're making it for, right? They need to make it from a perspective, not for the hardcore gamer or the purist, but for somebody who's coming in brand new to set the stage of what uh, this TV show is really about. And this is just them explaining, you know, exactly what the cordyceps is and 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 what the fungus is and and how um catastrophic it could be uh if it goes right now it only affects insects like ants uh but if it were to ever affect humans you know it would be we would lose essentially it would be over for us it's a rat and he makes that uh he makes that very clear and then we actually get into <coughs> what's what's present day um well not necessarily present day in the in, in the in the show but before pre-pandemic pre-outbreak with joel tommy you know sarah having uh having breakfast uh in their home in texas and you know they're just talking having breakfast and 
Uh, Joel and Tommy are construction workers, so they're just talking about that. And Sarah's getting ready for school. Um, and while they're leaving, you know, getting ready to go uh, on the back of Tommy's truck, it said uh, that he was a war vet. I d I'm pretty sure in the game he is not a war vet at all. Um, that's never indicated. But I think they're just showing that uh, to indicate that Tommy is a very skilled, he's a very skilled fighter, hunter, soldier, marksman. Um, that's revealed in the game, especially in, in part two. Uh, because like, for example, it's, it's with Tommy that that Ellie learns how to, you know, use a um, sniper rifle. Well, Joel, he, she, she did use a rifle uh, with Joel in the first game. But Tommy, you, that was like a higher, a higher caliber rifle um, in, you know, in shooting at a much longer distance. And, you know, that sniper section with Tommy in part two, there's a reason why Tommy, you know, uh, why, why Tommy was such a, you know, he's a sharpshooter. He's very skilled marksman you know all of that he's more he's he's better than joel honestly when it when it comes to that um so i think they just wanted to really um highlight that and, and explain um you know just where tommy is coming from and you know you know give a little bit more about him um so fast forward a little bit you know we get to the part where sarah uh takes joel's um he's, she's taking joel's money to get his watch fix for his for his birthday uh and while she's you know she leaves school she gets to the uh, watch repair repair place and you know you hear sirens and police cars in the background and everything like that and this is them like so slowly developing the scene that something is going wrong you know it's gradually happening it just doesn't suddenly happen so you see the the, the watch technician's uh, wife get all panicky you know and once again indicating something slowly developing and um, rushes Sarah out the store after she gets Joel's watch fix. So shit is going down soon. Everybody who plays the game know, oh man, we're getting closer to that moment. Because of course, all this that's happened so far with Sarah, you know, going to school, the breakfast, none of that happens, right, in, in the game. We don't see none of that. But to build up to Sarah's inevitable death um, and to make it more of a moment, you gotta give her a little bit more time. Right. Because that was one thing that was one of the criticisms I had in the game was me personally. I didn't care about Sarah's death. It didn't really do nothing for me. I'm like, uh, I, I've known this girl for maybe like five minutes, if that. And then she dies like I, I don't really care because also at that point, you don't really know Joel. So I don't know this little girl. I don't know Joel. Why do I care about his daughter dying? Don't know either one of them like they. I don't know them from a can of paint. You know, some people say I'm a little cold for that, but I think that's kind of kind of true. So that's why it's important that they build up all these moments to like at least give you a better like relationship with uh, Sarah and Joel. So you care about by, by that time, even though it's still a short time, by the time you get up to that point, you still care about them a little more. So the watch technician, you know, wife rushes uh, Sarah out the store. Um, she goes to the el she goes to the neighbor's house and these are elderly people and Sarah starts to look at the, the, one of the DVDs and and uh, I think it's the uh, Hunter and Viper uh, DVD that's a Easter egg from I know it's in the last of us part two I'm not sure if it's it, it might be in part one but that's one of the movies the action movies uh, that Joel uh, really likes to watch um, so Sarah goes to this elderly woman's house and the uh, the grandmother who seems to not not be all the way there um, starts to twitch and just shake in a very odd demeanor. It's 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 kind of blurred in the background. They don't want to make it too obvious, but you know, it, and it looks kind of creepy. And that kind of tells you, okay, something something is wrong with with that uh, with that elderly woman, and some shit is definitely going to go down w with her. Um, and then she goes back to normal after that. You don't really see any any twitching, um, but you know something is about to go down. Uh, and then when Ellie is uh, Ellie's leaving the neighbor's house, you see the dog staring at the woman. And I wonder, because the dog can sense that something is wrong, I wonder if that's something that they're going to use in like future episodes that like animals or dogs can like sense um infected or sense when somebody's infected or sense when something is wrong i wonder because you know you got to remember like in one of the things i've learned about in tv shows or movies it, uh, directors say never put anything 
in your in 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 your uh in your show unless it's vital or, or important everything has to mean something um and it did mean something you know pretty quickly uh as we're gonna get to but i wonder if they're gonna use it in, in the long run too or 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 if this was just a one-off we'll see um so later that night this is this is essentially where the where the game starts more more or less um Sarah uh, gives Joel his his fixed watch and, you know, she uses the 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 line that everybody is familiar with from the game. Oh, you know, sell about selling hardcore drugs and all that real cute, you know. Um, so they're watching TV and Joel gets a call from Tommy saying that he's in jail and he needs to be bailed out because he's going to be there all weekend otherwise. So he puts Sarah to bed. Obviously, this is not how it happened in the game. Uh, I think this is also them showing that uh, Tommy in this show is going to be is going to be a little bit reckless you know he go he, you know he got in a bar fight he goes to jail he runs off and joins the fireflies eventually you know he's a little bit you know reckless and, and you know joel has to look 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 over him um and you know look after him and everything like that because he can be a little bit bullheaded and and, and 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 uh you know a bit spontaneous and, and impulsive um so joel has to go bail him out and um we they uh fast forward a little bit you know i think a few hours later sarah hear sirens explosions helicopters go that goes downstairs and then we get a dog jump scare right now in the in the game the the this is a this is a fake out right because usually because what happened in the game was joel uh appears at the uh, at the uh screen door and then he closes it and then the neighbor jimmy cooper uh you know bangs on the um the screen door because he's infected so that's what people expected you know so they're messing with people who play the game and uh to you know show you that yeah what you expect what you always expect is not gonna happen um so it's the dog from uh from next door and uh sarah goes to the ne next door neighbor's house she almost she goes in like the kitchen area i think it was she almost slips on some blood she finds the the male uh the male with his neck bleeding um looked like his carotid was uh, the damn near ripped out um and the and the older uh the oldest elderly woman biting the neck of the uh of the other woman and something this is something different we we didn't see in uh in the game uh, in the game the runners cuz this woman is essentially a runner now uh she they just bite you and they have regular teeth right but in the show and i actually like this change they have like the i guess i don't know if those are the tendrils that they were um essentially talking about but whatever you want to call these little plant like uh these plant these plant like um things coming out of their uh i guess you can call them tendrils whatever plant like uh, little tendrils coming out of their mouth and that's what infects them rather than just getting bit that actually makes um a lot more sense because that's how they would spread you know the spores and and, and the and the infection and the and the fungus so that and that was very uncomfortable to look at by the way that was i don't know it made me itch it was very uncomfortable so props to them for actually uh making making that change i don't want to see that scene again though that was very uncomfortable um just because it looks itchy not because you know she was getting bit and killed or nothing like that um so she runs out you know because she's freaked the hell out and then um joel and she meets joel and tommy outside and joel hits this runner with a with a wrench and then they they get out they you know they get in the car they trying to escape the highway by the way when they're on the road so they get on the highway we're at the part of the game you know when um they're driving on the highway trying to escape and get out of town and uh this doesn't show all the parts that you see in the game like you see the hospital i know you see the hospital in the distance um and you also see a runner very early on the highway attack somebody's car i don't think that's that part was in the show uh and of course you see the all the you know the parts like tommy trying to slow down for people on the highway that they, they need help joel joel tells him to to keep going um you know joel is not he's he's not he's not with that he's not fucking with that like nah bro we gotta worry about ourselves right now we gotta keep going um so 
and we and Joe, they so they get into town, right? And one one of the crazy things that I, they we had another fake out essentially, right? Because it it looks like what happens in the game. Obviously, they get hit by a car, um, and their car flips over. But that's another fake out because it looks like they're about to get hit by a car, but that doesn't happen. That's not what flips their car over. Essentially, a plane turbine. I think it was a turbine, some, some, some part of a plane hits the back of their car and then that's what flips over their car and leads to Sarah uh, getting injured and um, and Joel uh, and, and a police car crashes in behind their car and then Joel and Sarah get cut off from Tommy. So a few changes there, obviously. So fast forward, Joel's running from this, uh, running from this runner and then he runs into it and runs into an agent, um, runs into a soldier, and that's where we get to the the very popular part that always gets people crying. Doesn't affect me though. Um, where the soldier gets the command from uh, his commanding officer, I guess, to execute Joel and Sarah because Sarah has an ankle injury and he doesn't know where where you know she got that injury from. She could be sick. They at that point they had no way of testing. You know that's something that came um, way after. This is literally the day one, essentially. Uh, yeah, one of the, just let's say, say the earlier days of the uh, of the outbreak. So there's no way of knowing or or not knowing. Um, so he gets the command to kill both of them because because they can't risk anything. So he shoots. They roll down a hill. And Tommy, uh, as, as the soldier is about to execute Joel, Tommy shoots a soldier, the soldier in the head. And then, um, so he saves his brother. And then they both look at Sarah. And Sarah, you know, starts, uh, it, Sarah's shot. She's hit in the stomach. And this part was just well acted. Um, and this this was a great uh, per performance by um, by her by the actor, um, what I think her name is Nico. Uh, apologize because I'm forgetting her. Yeah, Nico Parker. Um, this was just a great performance by her. I like I said, it didn't affect me that much in the game, um, but this was just an amazing performance by her. You really got to see her emotion. I will say in in the in the remake, uh, it, it I I liked it better than the, than the original game because because you got to see her because of the visuals are better. You got to see like that blank stare in her eyes. Um, and you know, in, in the show, she's hyperventilating and like, she's just freaking out and Joel's trying to, you know, comfort her and trying to help her, but she's in too much pain. And yeah, that was a, that was a, a really good scene. Um, so my hat's off to that one. That was a, that was a good scene. So that's the, uh, the, the, the prologue essentially. And now about, what is it? 20 years later, I think, um, we're at the Boston QZ. So they want to kind of uh, set the um, set the stage for how life is now, right? In in the uh, after the outbreak, and they start out with this random child stumbling from like the the, the um, outside, you know, the outside territory, stumbling into the Boston uh, uh, quarantine zone, uh, where and he's examined right for for an infection, and. It's revealed that he's infected, but they don't they don't tell him that. And what's interesting in is <clears throat> in the in the game, all like the Fedra officers are kind of revealed to be like dickheads, like they're, you know, they're jerks. And initially when you're watching this and you're like, you see that the test is red and that means positive. Right. Um, and she's comforting him and comforting him. And you're like, oh, you know. The, all, not all these federal agents are bad. They're not all bad people. She's being very polite, very, very kind to this to this little boy that, that they found, um, you know, just telling him, listen, we're going to fix you right up. We're going to give you water and food. Don't worry about it. And they give him, um, quote unquote, medicine. But it's obviously a lethal uh, injection, um, I guess, euthanasia. And they essentially, you know, um, kill him in a merciful way, in a very humane way way uh i guess and then we get to see joel and um joel and um tess at this point in the boston qz 
working, um, doing things for ration cards because, you know, that's how you survive. You have to do work. You have to uh, to get ration cards to eat and everything like that. And people trade these ration cards. They they barter, they bargain, do all that type of stuff. And they're uh, essentially just taking bodies off of uh, off the truck and burning them. And Tess sees the body of this little boy that we just saw in the previous scene. Uh, we know because it's, you know, the sneakers and everything like that. And she's like, she can't do it. So Joel had to do it. And I think they made Joel do it. Uh, they wanted to show that Joel really lost everything. And he doesn't really, that doesn't bother him, bother him to throw a kid's body in the fire. It doesn't phase him. You know, he lost his, he lost his daughter. So he's kind of like a shell. He's pretty, he's pretty empty, you know? Um, so that just doesn't, that just doesn't phase him. He's like, oh, whatever. I don't, you know, I have nothing inside. I am an empty, I am an empty vessel at this point. Um, so yeah, he throws the body and yeah, they're just showing you how, how cold and how cruel the world that they live in is right now. Um, so, you know, Joel talks to a Fedra uh, soldier, you know, uh, about jobs that they can do, that they can get for rations, which is, they didn't really show that in the game. They kind of, in the game, they kind of make it seem like Joel is a full-time smuggler. Like that's what he does all the time. That's his, I guess, profession in in the in the outbreak world, right? He because they didn't really show him in the game working for any rations or anything like that. It's like, oh no, I'm a smuggler. That's that's just what he does. That's how he makes his living. Um, but I in this world, I guess he does both. He smuggles because in the next scene you see him talking to a Fedra soldier, um, <clears throat> and he's selling him him drugs, uh, oxy, I think it was, and uh, because Joel is trying to get a car battery and um, a car, you know, trying to get a truck and a car battery, and we're going to learn about that a little bit later. So they're showing you, you know, what Joel essentially does in his uh, in his free time. Um, that's his, you know, profession because everybody does something different in, in this world. We got smugglers, hunters, uh, you know, cannibals, slavers, and all that stuff. And you know, there's different factions that people have fell into uh, in this in this world. Um, so you see deserters being hung by Fedra. You know, if you try to leave the quarantine zone, um, you will be hung if you're caught. Uh, like I said, Joel sold this Fedra, uh, this Fedra soldier some stuff. Uh, Fedra so soldier t tells him to, you know, stay off the street because there's been a lot of Firefly activity. We know Fireflies are the are the freedom fighters in, in, in the in the in the game um, going against uh, Fedra. Uh, so tell them tell them to stay off the street. You know, easy mistake uh, to make in the dark, which is, you know, some foreshadowing going on. So Robert and Tess. Right. So we we see Robert. Um, Robert essentially, Robert and his men essentially have Tess hostage and is regretful for ripping her off, uh, right? Because he sold what he was supposed to sell. So Tess pays Robert, Robert sells his stuff to somebody else. So, and, but he, but Robert is afraid of Joel. So they're trying to like, they're trying to work it out essentially. And at that time, an explosion from a firefly attack happens and that leads Tess to go outside and get stuck, um, you know, in the middle of a, like a firefly and, and a Fedra uh, shootout. And that's something that's, you know, very, um, that happens a lot, you know, that happens a lot in this world. Fireflies are always going against um, Fedra because, you know, they're, they're a tyrannical um, organization, really, um, unfortunately. And they're, they're still, this, this is like, I think Fedra is still like a U.S., uh, a, a U.S., government agency essentially in this world right they're, they're still i guess approved and funded by the by the by the u.s uh they're still a government agency i think in or in their own right maybe so moving on from that right the explosion happens you know Tess gets stuck between um the, the firefly and the uh and the um fedra shootout and then we get to see ellie for the first time uh, Bella Ramsey. So Ellie is captured by the Fireflies, uh, who are running basic tests tests on her, and you know we know why um, because essentially Marlene knows that she is uh, immune, but she's you know just running tests on her because she know Ellie was bit. Uh, I think it was a few weeks ago, um, and one of the things they mention is that Marlene is 
the leader of the Fireflies in the Boston QZ. There's Fireflies in other in other uh, locations, but I think in the game they make it seem that Marlene is the leader of the Fireflies everywhere and overall. They may have other commanders uh, in other places and other locations, but Marlene is the overall leader. Um, but in the, in the show, they they and which kind of makes more sense because how could she really lead? Uh, fireflies that are other places um, that would be kind of hard to do in these in, in this situation and in, in this scenario so she says uh, she's the leader of the fireflies in the Boston QZ I just found it interesting that they specified that 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 point um, so next we get to the scene where Joel skips to the head of the line um, a man who handles radio communication um, you know, reaches out to uh, people in exchange for items. Um, this also wasn't in the game in any capacity. Uh, this reveals that what Joel's current motivation is. Joel is trying to get in touch with Tommy because uh, Tommy has, you know, ran off and, jo and uh, joined the Fireflies. And Joel is trying to get in touch with him because apparently Tommy is in trouble and needs, and needs his help. Um, this was not how it was in the game. Uh, we don't even hear mention after the initial you know prologue we don't even hear mention of tommy until like what was that 60 percent into the game uh where he gets to the dam um the dam part near jackson uh, so this was not his his motivation um in trying to get out the boston qz at all um but they've but they've changed that and the radio guy mentions uh what's interesting is he mentions slavers and raiders uh, as the dangers that are out there, the type of people that are out that are out there, because he knows Joel is trying to escape. The raiders are probably just hunters. That's who he was re he's referring to. But the slavers is the only slavers that we know in the Last of Us world are uh, the rattlers. But the rattlers uh, are revealed to us as a group at the end of part two. So it's interesting because that's who he's referring to. But in part one of this show they're all they're still mentioning them but the rattlers are all the way in santa barbara as far as we know not that, to say that they can't be other places but it's just interesting that he mentions them now um you i mean you could maybe think that he's referring to the cannibals also but the cannibals are not necessarily slavers they're just they're just cannibals who lock you up and eat you but they're not slavers so uh, like I said, the only factions that we know and, and group that we know that are slavers are the Rattlers. Um, so interesting that, that he said that. Um, so we get to Joel and Tess uh, after told, Tess is a, is in a, a federal lockup for for a while. Uh, she goes back to Joel and Tess's apartment. And, I, and in the game, Joel and Tess have a completely platonic relationship. There's nothing there. There's nothing that points to that they really had anything else there besides a platonic relationship and they just like are very cool with each other and they do care about each other um and she gets in the bed with joel and just kind of hugs him so i'm like eh, was there any ever anything there because i don't remember her ever making contact with joel or anything like that um in 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 the game um and then uh so tess and joel need to get their rations card cards back um, that they gave to Robert along with the car and, and the battery. Uh, in the game, what they uh, were trying, what they were trying to buy from from Robert was weapons and ammo, and that's what the Fireflies also needed uh, for their war with Fedra. So they changed it to, you know, they changed Joel's motivation. He's trying to get out of there, so he needs a car, the battery, and all that stuff. In the game, it was weapons and ammo. Um. So we go to so now we go to Marlene and some of the Fireflies at this apartment, which is like one of their what they're using as a base, um, one, one of their uh, bases, hideouts, I guess. And they're talking about the strategy. Um, Marlene is talking to Kim, this other Firefly, about the strategy and what's their plan. And they've been losing this war with Fedra for a very long time as freedom fighters. And the plan is to take Ellie West. And she hands uh, Kim a note. Um, and what I pretty sure is pretty sure that she told Kim or what was on that note was probably something in regards to Ellie being immune um 
or having a maybe she didn't tell her that Ellie was immune, but she she might have told her that they had a cure for for the uh, for the for the virus for the you know for the virus, um, and that there's somebody uh, out west who can do it, uh, and she's most likely referring to Jerry in St. Mary's Hospital uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah. So that's more or less what she's probably referring to and what she what she told Kim. Um, so now and then what happens is so fireflies, you know, this random firefly tries to recruit Joel on the street. And that's that's just the funny part. I thought I would mention that um, he says half of the fire firefly slogan and Joel t tells him to fuck off. Essentially, um, Joel ain't trying to be in no firefly. Uh, and then, um, so Marlene talks to Ellie, she enters, enters the room, you know, Ellie is still locked up and she talks to Ellie, right? And she gives Ellie her backpack and in the backpack was a switchblade. Now we know this switchblade was Ellie's mother, uh, Ellie's mother's switchblade, right? Now in the last of us comic, if you've never read the last of us, American dream comic, um, Marlene actually gives Ellie that switchblade because Marlene know knew Ellie's mother uh, Anna I think her name was um, so Ellie already had the switchblade in her backpack but Marlene was actually the one who who gave her uh, the, the the switchblade because she because she got it from Ellie's mother um, and Marlene in the show reveals that uh, it's the same thing she knew she knew Ellie's mother and she's the one who put Ellie in the Fedra school just to keep her safe, just to watch over her, keep an eye on her. Uh, because once again, she knew her mother and that's, you know, the same thing that happens in, in, in the comic. The only different thing there is that she actually hands Ellie the switchblade there. Ellie already had the switchblade in her, in, in her backpack. Um, so yeah, Marlene is, is that's why I always, you know, not to get too far ahead, but that's why I always think, you know, Joel is an effed up person because you you could honestly say that Marlene cared more about, at least at this point, Marlene cared more about uh, Ellie than than Joel. And you know, Marlene was really somebody who was looking out for her and re was really her caretaker. Um, so, and I can't remember all the details. We don't, we don't have much details about Ellie's mother, um, but I, but I'm sure that one of these uh, episodes will expand about Ellie's mother. Uh, if she was a firefly and who Ellie's father was, we don't know anything about Ellie's father. We know very little about uh, her, her mother from the game. So maybe they might expand on that. I'm sure they will. So it'll be interesting to know. Um, OK, so Marlene explains, like I said, you know, explains, explain the, the plan to Kim about, you know, Ellie now being their focus and, and everything like that. Um, and so we go go back to Tess and Joel now. Uh, getting to the apartments where the fireflies are um, through an underground tunnel and that and you know the fireflies are using this as a base as I said and you know they push this uh, little door open and see Robert dead and they were trying to see he was trying to sell the, the battery again the battery wasn't even good and in the game um, and by the way this battle between Robert's men and the fireflies happens off screen I would have liked to see that I'm like, I don't know why we just randomly uh, stumble upon that through Joel and Tess's view. I would I think I would like to see at least part of that shootout or that sh shootout uh, initially happen. Maybe not the whole scene, because in the previous scene, we just see, you know, Marlene and Kim and, and Ellie and everything like that. You go to Joel and Tess, they stumble upon the apartments and Robert's dead and, and, and Marlene's shot. And they're like, oh, st something went down since the last time we saw y'all. Okay, cool. I would have just liked to seen that. So, yeah, she sees Robert dead, and um, in the game, Tess shoots Robert. Just pops like two in him, two or three in him. Always got to be safe, right? Um, just gives him the double tap, and then that's when Marlene stumbles in, and uh, and and says that she had business with Robert, and that's when they make the deal and everything like that. So pretty much the the, the show skipped that entire part where you meet Marlene after killing Robert and you go to the, that whole part actually where you go to the docks, 
where you go to the docks. That's where Robert men, Robert's men are. You kill Robert's men. You you uh, you hunt down Robert, and then you meet Marlene, and then you go through. Uh, the, you know, you get past all those Fedra guards, and then you get to Ellie. So all that is skipped. Uh, they they change that. So you know, just to once again make the episode a little faster because that's mainly for gameplay purposes. Um, okay, so. You know, Tommy is not, I mean, well, Joel is not necessarily very fond of Marlene. They know each other. I guess they, they're somewhat cordial, but he's not exactly happy with uh, Marlene because, you know, Marlene recruited Tommy into being a firefly, and he's apparently a firefly somewhere uh, some somewhere else, which makes me think, when. so when we meet Tommy later in this show, is he not going to be a former firefly? firefly anymore and and you know um is he not going to be at the dam trying to get jackson up running with his wife marie um what yeah, like what exactly does tommy need help with you know because he's been uh joel says he needs my help you know he's in danger i'm like what does he need help with because that was obviously was not the situation in the game tommy is you know doing very fine um doing very fine over there where, where uh where he's at uh, near jackson so um so they negotiate, right? Um, Joel ultimate Joel and Tess ultimately agree to smuggle uh, Ellie uh, West, right? And he agrees because he knows the Fireflies uh, usually have repurposed Fedra equipment, which is better than what they would end up probably end up getting. And you know Joel's profession is a smuggler; that's what him and Tess do. So you know um, Marlene trusts them. Um, they know that. You know, in exchange for the the weapons, or well, not the weapons, uh, but the items and everything that they promised her, uh, Joel will definitely uh, get the job done. Um. So fast forward, they're leaving the QZ. Uh, they're they're getting out. They're at they're at, a, at a different apartment, and they show that there's this communication system that they use over the radios, right? So it's not able to be, you know they don't want to speak plainly on the radio so people can inter intercept what they're saying and know exactly what's going on um so they use a code by songs uh depending on when the songs re was released so they have songs from the 60s songs from the 70s and songs from the 80s and that's why they have this book of uh of of billboard songs billboards billboard hits uh, from the from those errors and I thought that was pretty cool that was that was pretty uh, a pretty smart um you know messaging um coding uh language to use is is songs like 70s 80s and, and all that stuff uh 80s meant uh something bad was gonna happen or you know there was an issue 70s I forgot what 70s and, and 80s meant but it's a whole it's a whole code that they that they use which is pretty cool so they leave the quarantine zone and they run into the uh, the same Fedra officer that Joel had sold the drugs to, um, and you know he he told Joel to stay in, and I, I don't know I, I felt like they kind of tried to just run past him. They didn't even look like they were really sneaking past him. I'm like that 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 was kind of just ha you know very haphazardly and, and abrupt how I just tried to walk past him like he's deaf. Like it was very video game like how they just tried to walk past him like. You know, like in video games where, you know, the, the enemy AI is kind of dumb and you would just literally walk right past them. They kind of try to do it in that way. Um, <clears throat> but he hears them and, uh, you know, tells them we're going to do this by the books. He scans all of them and Ellie knows she is infected. So she panics, stabs the guy. And then, you know, shit goes down in the game. I'm always going to do comparisons you know, of what happened in the game for context, right? So in the game, when they're escaping and heading to, headed to the abandoned buildings, um, it's actually two Fedra soldiers. It's a woman and it's a it's a male. Now it's just this this one guy. Um, so he scans them, Ellie panics, stabs him with, with the switchblade. Uh, and then, you know, she uh, the Fedra soldier has the gun pointed at Joel. And Joel has this like PTSD flashback moment and goes straight into survival mode, goes straight into his primitive, uh, his, his primitive mind and starts to beat the hell out this guy uh, because he has the flashback back to when uh, the gun, the gun was pointed uh, at him and and uh, and Sarah. So he just charges right at the guy and, and beats the hell out of him. He activates his old man's strength. 
that legendary mythical old man strength that you know everybody talks about that joel has so he activates that and he and he kills this guy and ellie is in the background eating this all up ellie hasn't even though she was born in the uh, post post outbreak you know post pandemic she's never really because she's still been um confined in the quarantine zone so she's never seen i think violence up close like that at this point she's never i'm trying to think about the dlc the uh the dlc with riley no i mean she's killing she's killed infected but i at that as, up to that point i don't think ellie has killed any people or seen yeah she hasn't killed any people or probably hasn't seen many people killed in that manner in that intimate manner because we know she when she shoots uh, when they're in uh, later, where's that area in the game? I think it's near the hotels uh, where Joel is getting um, choked out and, and drowned. Uh, that's where she like probably shoot, I think shoots her first person. Um, but anyway, she has like this violence awakening and she's very enamored and, and, and very interested in this guy getting his face beaten. It's just very uh, amazing to her. Um, and it, yeah, it just changes something in her. She just is very, uh, you know, possessed by it almost. Her face looks possessed. Um, and then the only part I didn't like about this part was they kind of breeze over this section. In the game, they kind of sit on this moment and, and let you, like, really, really get into this moment. The fact that it's, it's, it's revealed that Ellie is infected and she's essentially immune, I guess. And Tess reacts to it. And it kind of happens in the background because Joel is kind of like shell shocked at the moment. And they, they kind of breeze over it very fast. Like, no, we got to run. And it's like, I mean, I get that Fedra's on your tail, right? And she says we got to run because Fedra's not too far behind. Um, but if you just find out somebody's in infected and they claim they're immune, uh, you're not just going to like run past that, you know, that quick. Like, nah, bro, we got to talk about this. Hold on. So in the game, I, I feel like they had handled that better, that scene better in the game uh, than the show. But anyway, so they run. Um, and at the end of the episode, the radio plays um, one of the songs, um, probably coming from from Tommy. And we see them running to the abandoned building um, where the where we know the clickers are going to be. Uh, so that's probably going to be our first time actually seeing a a clicker um in in the tv show because there wasn't aside from the um the first scene we didn't really see that much the, the first part the prologue we didn't see that many infected in, in this episode and neil Druckmann has always said this is not a zombie show he doesn't want last of us to be a you know a zombie game um those are just the circumstances around them it's really about the people um so but in the second episode we're gonna see some clickers and i, I think at this in the in this at this part in the game, it's probably like, I don't know, I want to say, I want to say, how how long does it take you to get to this part in the game? Let me see. I, I want to say like maybe two hours less, probably a little bit, probably a little bit less, honestly. So, yeah, it, it feels a little bit rushed that they got here this, this fast, but it probably takes about this time in the game to get up to this part, I guess. So it's fine. So that's the uh, that's the whole episode. And I still I said I didn't want this to be like 40 something minutes, which is kind of crazy. Like I said, I don't know if I'm, I'm if I'm necessarily good at doing these recaps, these summaries, um, because maybe I go to uh, I go too detailed and mention every little thing too much. But I feel like it's important. So like I feel like I got to like, you know, kind of track, you know, all the major moments in the episode. So I don't know if, if I should like not do it that way. Y'all, y'all let me know. Like I said, I'm new to doing this because um, I don't know if I'm, if I'm being too detailed and mentioning every little thing or if I should do it that way. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the episode. And I thought it's it's a very good premiere episode. They they really established uh, the episode and, and produced it in a way that you don't have to play the game to under to understand the show or to like the show. Um, I'm. I'm I'm really interested in hearing people's uh, opinion who's never played the game, what they what they thought about the episode. Um, and, you know, I think their thoughts are going to be very valuable and, and very interesting. Um, <clears throat> and also to even hear about somebody who who watches the show first and then plays the game. I would really love to, you know, eventually hear uh, their their thoughts on it. 
So good first episode. Like I said, you know, I, I talked about my impressions of it already of the first episode already. So I don't need to reiterate much of that. But I like I really enjoyed the episode. Um, it had some funny parts, by the way, like when Kim's air was shot off and Marlene was like, you don't have a damn air. Can you please shut up? Uh, so, yeah, very, very good first episode. I, I really look forward to the to the next one to seeing uh, more infected. Like to me, the only thing that I'm not convinced about, which could get better, is just Bella Ramsey as Ellie. Um, she could evolve a little bit more and, and, and get better as Ellie through the rest of the nine episodes. So, yeah, that's my recap, summary, review, whatever you exactly want to call it. Um, let me know what y'all think and uh, hit the like button. Um, let me know if there's any way I can I can improve these. If you like it in this long, long form of going over uh, everything that happened and, and then comparing it to the game and and. and and, and what I noticed and everything in it. Uh, yeah, just, just let me know. Uh, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter if you're not. And uh, I will catch y'all on the next video. If you want to watch the episodes with us on the Last of Us, uh, uh, excuse me, on the uh, Weapon Wheel Patreon, we have a tier for that to have the watch party in the Discord. So you can join us if you like. I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.